I messed up tonight I lost another fight I still messed up but I'll just start again I keep falling down I keep on hitting the ground I always get enough to see what's next Birds don't just fly They fall down and they get up Nobody learns without getting Welcome to Minute 41 of the Zootopia Minute Podcast. I am your co-host because my co-host is not here. I am Choco Pony. You guys might know me in the pony fandom for doing pony stuff like selling art and stuff. I'm a con artist just like Nick. That's Ooh. why I'm dressed like Nick. And for those who don't know, that song was composed to us uh, by uh, one of our good friends, All Levels At Once. So if you see him, he's not in the room right now, but if you see him, say uh, thank you. Uh, that was an amazing rendition of the song. And because my co-host is not here, I am joined by three special guests who may or may not be very, very big Zootopia fans, depending on uh, <laughs> who's judging. And I'll let uh, my mom, the, my first guest to my right, introduce himself, and they'll go down the line. So, hi, I'm Paleo Steno, and I uh, I do a bunch of stuff on YouTube with movie reviews and cartoons, and like especially animated movies like Zootopia. You didn't admit your problem. That's my problem. How obsessed you are with Zootopia. I know. I don't know this, Paleo. Hey guys, I'm, I'm AC Race Best, uh, a YouTuber. And um, I think I saw Zootopia once. Here's a doll! At least 30 times. Hey, my name's Saber Spark. And, uh, oh, hey, hey thank you. And uh, my buddy here, Race, has gotten me hooked on this movie as well. Right. Curse you, Race, thank you all for joining us. <laughs> you and your problems. <laughs> Hi, uh, since you guys are all here, it's perfect timing for you guys to sign in for me. Okay, well, uh, for people who are listening <laughs> on the panel, I guess, because this is being recorded, uh, we have some random uh, sorry who just come and interrupt us, so <laughs> I guess we'll, you'll be edited in the uh, panel. That's weird. Cool, don't put my face on that. Oh, I guess it's too late. Like, this is a live stream, live stream, buddy. Yeah. Like, I guess it's an no, it's funny here. because we're going to go for a very bureaucratic scene with the DMV. Um, and you yeah. have bureaucratic uh, work to do. Oh, How ironic is that? What am I looking at? It is. Uh, well, just, I, just I just like got here. here. Yeah, I guess just they didn't make sure you guys are here and it's all good. Yeah. So. You have done too? This is just his way to get our autographs. Oh, really what? It's like all right, so now uh, I guess we'll just start with that one minute. Yes. So that is probably the most infamous scene of the movie before the movie even came out. That was the one promo clip they were releasing online yeah. for everyone to see. Um, I guess by now, even people who have not seen the movie Zootopia have probably at least seen that scene um, at that some scene? point in time. In fact, uh, if you guys were looking at on Twitter, we re-blogged, um, we retweeted a picture of someone who worked at the Z DMV dressed like Flash. So I mean, but when, but when you think about it, like what other fictional DMV characters are there? I mean, yeah, it's basically only Flash. So let's think of another movie. That's it. All right, so. What did you guys think about that one minute? Out of context. <laughs> well, as you said, it's one of the most iconic scenes from the movie. I remember, like, when there were trailers for Zootopia, you know, arriving before the movie aired, of course, mm -hmm. hence trailers, that, like, entire movie theaters would erupt laughing watching mm -hmm. it. I'm like, this is promising. This is the, the, they really nailed this scene, and people like, can really relate to it, because everyone dreads the DMV. No one likes it. Yeah, it, um, it played before, like, every movie that I watched... Uh, in like early 2016, uh, before the movie came out, um, and like every time, like people people would laugh. And then when I finally saw the movie, and and that that scene came up, um, people were still laughing. Yes. So yep. I'm, I'm not sure if like they didn't see it or like yeah, because there's there's a lot of people that only see like two to three movies. This a year. this was so. a yeah a real good example of like a scene that you sometimes see in a trailer that is funny that one time, and then and then you know people are like okay. That's, you know, I, now that we're not laughing during the movie, this yeah. is the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Where, like you said, every time I saw the movie, folks, 
30 times in theaters I saw this movie, and no, every no, no, no. time the scene got a reaction out of people. Every single time. It was never once just quiet. It was, oh, I mean, I was the one guy. But, you know. I went to the DMV recently, and I was chuckling because I had to go back about five times. Because I kept, like, not having the proper... I had the, I, had the pro I wasn't having the proper oh, paperwork that they needed, and I kept going back and forth, back and forth, and I'm like, this scene just rings so true to me. Mm -hmm. How uh, infuriating it is, or infuri infuriating it is. The I, I think Disney started to also realize they had some gold with this one because yeah. this was the teaser. The movie that this teaser released with was Star Wars: The Force Awakens. And it yeah, beat the Force so Awakens. Awesome. So this movie, it. Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Well, the, DM, the DMV, like like you're saying, the struggles for the DMV is universal. Almost every American can feel, it. and even people from other countries have a similar structure, a bureaucratic structure to the DMV. So that's why everyone could identify with that one yeah. scene. Mm -hmm. And then comparing it to another anthropomorphic animal show, uh, Bojack Horseman, like oh, yeah. in the, the recent season, they already had their own scene with trying to deal with DMV and when lines fell, paperwork and whatnot. So, and of course, <laughs> the big joke you can think of, the uh, in the world of animals, you have to make the people who work at the DMV sloughs. And I think, I actually think when they made the movie, this clip probably was the first clip they made because it was the one that was showing like all the teasers. It was the one that was previewed online. And it's the one that got the most laughs. And I think kind of convinced them, hey, this mm -hmm. might actually be a promising movie. So that's why I was actually wondering if it was, if they made that scene first, and then they had to try to fit it within the movie, because when we really think about it, Judy, she could have, even though she was not in the system, she was working on a case. She probably could, you know, go back to the police station and do it, but they just wanted that laugh, right? Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think they just kind of added it in retrospectively, or do you think it, it kind of still works in that context? I think it works. I think, so, I, I, I mean... I think, okay, I'm not sure this is uh, switching gears too much, but like one of the most beautiful things about movies that have animals in it is that you can look at an animal and just seeing the animal already speaks so much of their character. Uh, you know, Nick is a fox, he's crafty and sly, and uh, Judy's a rabbit, and they're busy, and they're, and they're trying to get things in. And then the sloth is a stroke of brilliance being super <laughs> slow. It's like, yeah, we get it. So, uh, but to answer your question about like, going back to the DMV to do that, I'm glad they had that scene in because yeah. it is a golden scene. And maybe she could have gone back to the police department, but at that point, I'm like, let's go ahead and start drifting away from the department. Let's get her out into the field and see how she interacts with the world of Zootopia. Yeah. I think you did bring up a good point because you kind of think of these stereotypes that each animal represents. And you think of rabbits as always jumping fast. They had to go over and bounce everywhere. And sloths are exactly their polar opposite. <laughs> so putting these two characters together, even not knowing what their characterizations are. Like, you didn't know who yeah. Flash was at that moment, but you know something beautiful was going to happen mm -hmm. when you get these two in the room conversation with each other. As we see, Flash was slowly speaking and Judy kind of interrupts <laughs> him. <laughs> and after he explains, well, I'm as fine as I can be, she's like, gives a little, hmm. <laughs> All right, that was awkward. <laughs> and we end there. We don't know what's going to happen the next minute, so stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, she, um, I remember another beautiful thing about this, uh, I guess, teaser was, um, obviously it's a scene in the movie, but it also worked because it really didn't tell you anything about the movie. It just started opening up with, there's an animal movie coming, and already yeah, there's a lot of good humor just movie. from that one scene. So that it, it opened up a lot of promise for it. Yeah. I think, I think when they use this as a trailer, that's what really started what would become the success that this movie had in theaters. So, yeah, and, uh, it was a smart scene to use, and obviously in the context of the movie, a very hilarious scene. All right. Who saw the movie opening day? Uh, all right. Did that actually work? Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. What? Uh, what, uh, what <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't realize how much I was going to love this movie until... The biggest fan saw it. Uh, Who saw it opening day when the furry convention was also in town? Oh gosh! Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw yeah, it. theater. <laughs> I saw opening day when Furry Fiesta was in Dallas, and yeah, that was kind of funny <laughs> seeing a bunch of fur suitors in the theater. <laughs> and when the wolves would howl on screen, they would all howl. <laughs> Those poor moms and dads are like, what's going on in this <laughs> yes. No, I saw it three different times, and I love the reactions. Uh, like each time I saw it, the audience would have different reactions. 
like the second time I saw it, it was very, very sparse day. There was like no one there. There's like one black family right sitting in front of me. And the mother, every time, I think she identified with Assistant Mayor Bellwetter because every time Nick was trying to touch her hair, she's like, mm -mm, you don't touch that. You don't touch that. <laughs> and, then the, uh, and then the last time I saw it, again, no spoilers since we're going minute by minute, but the, there's, a, there's a last scene in the movie where you think something's going to happen and when that thing does happen, the kids start crying, like, like their eyes out. And even when it was still no, it was actually a ruse. The parents had to take the kids out because they were still crying. So I guess this movie kind of did scare some kids. But it was interesting seeing all the different reactions um, based on the different audiences. I think what gets me about Zootopia is that, like, I love it when there are students at Disney, of course, who can just bring an original property and it just knocks out of the park. Oh, yeah. Like when How to Train Your Dragon came out, I was like, this is amazing. This is like, DreamWorks made this? This feels so much bigger than what they usually go after with the like, fart jokes. It's actually have something <laughs> serious. And then, and the, you know, I'm not saying Zootopia was like unexpected from Disney, but I was like, I'm like, this really, again, like reinforces that new wave of like content they've been releasing. Because I keep forgetting that Zootopia came out in 2016, mm -hmm. and then Moana came out later that year. And I was like, yes. that was a great year for Disney. Yep. And uh, both <laughs> yeah. how they captured, like, because I always look at Disney where on one side there's the princess films, and mm -hmm. the other side there is whatever the heck they want. Mm -hmm. You know, Back at Ralph, you know, the old school Robin Hood. Yeah, Lion King. <laughs> Lion King, yeah, yeah. because when Rose Lion King was being made, it was considered Project B. While Pocahontas was Project A, mm -hmm. so all the good people are working on Pocahontas. No, that's a big thing. <laughs> like, okay, rag tag team, go to Lion King. Good luck. Boom, Lion King just destroys it all. And the people in Pocahontas are like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I think uh, speaking of Lion King, um, I think College Humor did a poll of what was everyone's favorite Disney animated movies, and I think Lion King and Zootopia were like in the top three. So if you think about the Disney animal films, are like sure. the ones yes. that people like. Yeah. Like, I've, I've seen some pretty heated debates online where people are like, what's better, Lion King or Zootopia? And, 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 <laughs> I'm not saying we have to choose now, guys. <laughs> You're in a Zootopia shirt. <laughs> no, but, but, but that's the thing is like, I, I, it made me realize. Oh no! There's your He's answer. Dead. <laughs> Your hero's like. <laughs> <laughs> but it it makes you realize how passionate fans are about their movies, and I love that though. Like I think that's one of the driving forces behind like media these days, and and it's well, always the been. fandom we're a part of. People are yeah. still not considering Alicorn Twilight canon. So yeah. you know? look at uh, look at Star Wars with EA and Battlefront, and how the fans. <laughs> yeah, love. that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, you're killing us. <laughs> All right, if you guys want to go listen to more of the podcast, you have to pay for new microtransactions. <laughs> five minutes. All yeah, right, five bucks to each of us. It's so yeah. cool that yeah. social media has been able to make it to where we don't need to like a middleman to like communicate yeah. how we feel, and that yeah. we can just get our voices out there, and the creators can go, okay, these this is how the fans, mm -hmm. this is how they're feeling. Yeah. In really fact, needs. Angry Joe actually did something on that too. Who's that? Who's that? Angry Joe, the video game yeah. reviewer. Yeah. Really popular. This is what you told me a name panel. We're not talking about gamers. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Well, Saber, you actually did bring up a good point about uh, how unique Zootopia was compared to Princess Films. But even outside of that, most of the Disney properties are based on pre existing um, stories or fairy mm -hmm. tales. Even Lion King was based off Hamlet. Um, Zootopia was one of the few films that actually was an original mm -hmm. property that right. Disney made. And actually, if you look at it, actually, that's what interests me because I saw Moana right after I saw um, when you know Zootopia and Moana came out the same year. I saw Moana. It was a great movie, but I thought, wait a minute, I've seen this before. And I kind of charted Moana was frozen in all the Disney Renaissance films. I realized, wait, each of these films fall a very specific cookie cutter formula. You have that opening you... scene, the I Want song, the mm -hmm. run away from home. Finding new friends, all of a sudden they feel like someone betrayed them, the villain, and then the ending. And then spoilers for the future. Man. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> man. I want to see Frozen Two now. <laughs> <laughs> breaks that mold, and you could you could see it. It's very it's it is like a it is a Disney film, but it's so different than what Disney has previously done. That's so so, so something about Zootopia that I really liked is how in the trailers I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, they're kind of. You know, I'm, this is going to be a fun LOL, you know, bunny movie. Oh my God, it's about racism and then, like, <laughs> the glass ceiling for like females and like the workforce mm -hmm. and 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 I was like not expecting this heavy message where for kids they're not going to go, oh, it's racism. 
they're going to go, oh, I feel bad for the body. But for adults, it's like, wow, I can, like, see what, this is, like, real world stuff going on, where it's about, like, you know, I'm not just some token bunny. You know, I'm not just some token black guy, you know, in the forest. It's like, no, I'm actually a person who worked hard for this. And that really speaks to me. I think it's a beautiful message that was very mature, and also not just mature, because it's typical for quality films to not do well in the box office. Is it Tokyo is very high quality and made a whole lot of money. Yeah, a million dollars. It, 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 it gives kids that first message of like, this is why it's bad to discriminate, especially like, you know, you don't know somebody just based off of, you know, their background, you know, what they look like. Mm -hmm. It's it's about who that person is. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it teaches kids very early on discrimination. Don't. Do Did it. you all get emotional watching the movie at all? Because like it got it got me during like the scene where like Nick stood up for Judy. I was like, oh my god, like yeah. this is getting me. It's so beautiful because we talked about this last night. It's not the minute we're talking about. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Go but, ahead. Uh, I, I won't. I won't. I, guys, who hasn't seen the movie? Who hasn't seen the movie? <laughs> That's my girlfriend. She's <laughs> lying. Um, but uh, no, it's it's good. I mean, I still don't want to like go uh, forward from what we're talking about. But, yeah, like, yeah, that's fine. But um, no, you, it really did deserve its Oscar win. Yes, that it, that's uh, like it was the same. This is actually the first year Disney released two animated films that were not one that was not a Pixar department. Two from the animation studios. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Zootopia and Moana. This was also the same year I think Kubo and the Two Strings came out. So we had some really high quality films, mm -hmm. but I, I would say Zootopia did really earn yes, that absolutely. Um, award, um, despite the others, because like you were saying, it's universal. Like you, mm -hmm. I think some people saw it as classism, some people saw it as racism, some people saw it as like you know facing the patriarchy. But that's the beauty of it because depending. It doesn't matter what your background is. Everyone could insert themselves in either Nick's or Judy's role, yes. which yep. I liked. The animals, like, uh, we watched a video a few years ago. It was uh, one of the... CR, if he talked about that furry movie. Oh, the, Analytics? Yeah, and how, yeah. like, you have certain animals, like a cheetah is fast, so it's good for an athlete-like character. Um, again, like, Nick being a fox is good for someone who's, like, a sly, you know, almost like a car salesman who's going to trick you out of your wallet. <laughs> So, like, it's it's so cool how animals are universal to our species. You know, as humanity, we're like, oh, elephants are big and loud, and, rah! and mice are all cheap, you know, quiet, and, and I want to have a multi-billion dollar company among the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's next door, isn't he? <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, it's just, it's just so cool, because it's like the, the writing's on the wall. You don't have to, like, be told how these characters are. You just see them and go... Oh, I get it, yeah. Yeah, because I think that was the issue. Most of the, a lot of TV shows and films that have come out within the last two years, especially surrounding the election, have been explicitly political, and you kind of, and it's kind of shoehorned in there. You kind of know what the end goal, what they're saying, their statement or philosophy is. But Zootopia is such a universal theme that it's yeah. like no one person goes, oh, this is a right-wing movie or this is a left-wing movie. Yeah, it's Everyone's also like the story like, was like worked on like, Years and years yeah. prior. So, yeah, the most beautiful yeah. thing about like going on the discrimination side of this is that I I love that you can literally look at it as it's telling you that it's not just a one way street. Anybody yeah. can get it, and and that's I think yeah, something that's has... sometimes lost in the real world. <laughs> and it's like oh, well, there's there a scene go. where uh, the tiger, that very handsome tiger, who treated you well, well all right. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he sits down on the uh, tram and like the mother bunny and like takes her baby bunny and kind of like holds her close. And I'm like, that's, I can't relate to the tiger for that. But I'm sure people in the audience who, who watched the movie can go, yeah, I, I felt that before. Where you, like, you feel like you're the scary one, when in reality you've done nothing when wrong. When you walk around with your brownie shirt, you never yeah. get <laughs> <laughs> Or, uh, or uh, the scene where the, you know, go back to the jungle predator, and he's like, I'm from the savanna or something. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know, like, you, you, you don't, it doesn't have to be like too ham fisted. It's just like, you know, we can kind of draw the, from point A to point B, and be like, oh, I get it. Yeah. It's like from the real world. Actually, you know that that actually happened to me. I wasn't wearing a brony shirt, but I was. Um, <laughs> I was in the theaters for the uh, I think My Little Pony movie, and they had there was a signed seating, so I had to sit in one specific seat. And there's like a kid and her mom right next to me. Oh, they saw yeah. this guy like discreetly got up and just moved one seat. Like, oh, okay. You should have gotten up and walked over when we see closer. <laughs> <laughs> Chase him throughout the movie. <laughs> 
But yeah, so yeah, something like that has happened, and it's like, oh yeah, everyone can identify. Not only can you identify the tiger, like I'm sure there are some people who identify with that, uh, the mother and the, the child mm -hmm. at some point. It's like, oh, there's a scary person on the bus. Let's kind of just move away. Oh my gosh. Can I, the scene that got me the most, I think, actually. I'm just going to ADD here, whatever. <laughs> is, can we talk about spoilers? Is it okay? I mean, is there anybody Only who cares? Only for you. Uh, but just make sure in the audience, is there yeah. anybody who cares about spoilers? I don't uh, mind. I don't care. Well, again, everyone's seen the movie. Okay. Okay. So the podcast we're seen the movie. We're allowed, the podcast. One, yeah. we're allowed to break one rule per episode, so I'm allowing you to break that rule. Thank you. Episode. So, uh, Lil Gideon, not Lil Gideon, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Judy. <laughs> I'm sorry. When Gideon Gregg's, uh, the very end of the movie, when he uh, when he like saw Judy when they were growing up again after you know they were kids and he bullied her, and he was like, "Listen, uh, Judy, I had a lot of aggression, and I, you know, I'm sorry." You know, it's like this guy went to therapy for this. He knew he had a problem. He he went through the motions of figuring it out, and now he's in a better place. I'm like, that's so cool for for this guy to get to that point on his own, and for the parents to be friends with him. Yeah, that's, that's, and you see, Judy's like. Okay. Okay. This uh, this can yeah. happen. I didn't I didn't see that coming in the movie. Me like I thought yeah. I thought it was just gonna be your typical. Oh man, that guy was a jerk. Yeah, they broke that stereotype. Yeah, so, it was wonderful. I love that scene. Yeah. I mean, what other film takes your generic bully character and makes him? Beauty and the Beast. Oh. <laughs> yeah, dude, Beauty was a jerk in that movie. I tell you, that's, that's another that's furry movie. Beauty, yeah. Gaston. Yeah. There's a trampoline that caught him at the very end, and he came out of that just fine. Oh, so he literally <laughs> had ups and downs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no one dies like Gaston. That's actually another. That's, that's something else I found. I saw when I was rewatching all these Disney films. The villain always dies because of something they've done. It, yeah, Clayton from Tarzan. Yeah, Tarzan's like he's like, let me not. You know, let's let's make this preventable. <laughs> I don't want you to hang yourself. He's like, I'm doing what I want. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's kind of I have a question for you. Uh, do you like Bellwether as a villain? Do you think she's like? Well, would you know she's a villain yet? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, but like, as in, like, there is that question <laughs> of like, you got the. <laughs> 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 no, no, but go you got the uh, the current Disney revival with these from the Moana, yes. Topia, whatnot. Uh, one of the complaints about this current revival is that the villains are not as good as they used to be. People Something compare people right compare about the Renaissance about like Ursula, Jafar yeah. being like these big villains of like Disney, and then whereas like for uh, Moana, Zootopia, Wreck It Ralph, um, Frozen, even like they've all had a villain that has like not started out as a villain. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like think, they have yeah. a mystery veil there. Yeah, they yeah. call it villain in disguise, and there's yeah. there's always a red herring character. I think Alan Tudyk always in all these movies, Alan Tudyk voices the red herring character who you think is a villain. So yeah, I think I think up until Zootopia, he was. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. Duke, Duke Weselton, uh, he was Weaselton in oh, this movie. Weaselton, Duke Weaselton. He was King Candy in um, Wreck It yeah. Ralph, but um, in almost every single one of these movies, uh, since uh, Bolt was the first that he started. Uh, voicing in, he was a character who was kind of the red herring if you yeah. didn't know if he was a villain or not. So yeah, that, I think you're right. The the animation revival, the um, or the the Disney revival specifically, does have a unique way of portraying the villains. But I also think it's part of the greater part of the animation revival where. Like, so if you guys don't know about history, um, there's always a period called the Golden Age, there's always a period called the Dark Age, the, um, the Renaissance, and another Dark Age, and then there's a revival. So it follows European history. If we think about the <laughs> so if we think about the 90s... Where's the Brony fan? The animation <laughs> crusades, yeah. where the animators go to the promised land to take yeah. it back. So in the, um, so in the European Renaissance, um, the artists and writers went back and looked at the Greek and Roman Golden Age. And basically, a lot of people say the animation renaissance got started when John Kay went back and did Ren and Stimpy, looking back at the Golden Age of Animation. Likewise, uh, it got started for Disney when they went back and did Little Mermaid. Yep. Now, the animation revival happened because instead of looking back at the Golden Age, people were looking back at the Renaissance period, seeing what was great about them. But then you could kind of see that all of them kind of inform each other, like... It's no coincidence that uh, My Little Pony and um, Adventure Time both came out in 2010. And they both have a very, very unique way of uh, crafting their episodes. Mm -hmm. And they were both made by folks who worked at Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon and Disney during the uh, 90s Renaissance period. And that kind of inspired all these future shows that came out, like uh, Gravity Falls, Steven Universe. And they all had... They actually, all these shows have like kind of the reformed character as well, like the bully who kind of became reformed. 
or uh, the hidden villain, the unexpected villain. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see this mirrored in what's happening with the Disney revival as well, which is just... I wonder if it's something that's kind of in that zeitgeist, or if it's just like that phase, that time we're in now, where we're trying to reinvent well, I mean, I think, I, these fictional characters. I, like, I don't know, I feel like humor has evolved with the times. Yeah. Where, like, if you look at the new DuckTales, like, <clears throat> the, 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 the triplets, you know, the ne nephews... They actually have personality now, and they make jokes that are like, I don't know, they're, they're more relevant like with the generation. They're basically all Rainbow yeah. Dash. Yeah, yeah. Or, or <laughs> they, they reinvented Webby for the show because yeah. she used to be, you know, I'm a girl, I like pink, and I like dolls, I'm scared. And now she's like, I'll go get her, who like actually is like a spy almost. And it's like, that's really uh, kind of a, a breath of fresh air that's quite enjoyable. Yeah. She and Elder are sorry, original. Yeah, I saw that. Like, <laughs> they actually have the old character like against the wall with like a. a <laughs> also, we apologize for everyone crammed in the small There's some more seating we... over here. Yeah, 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 if, yeah. If anybody would like to like just scoot over on the on the seats, no, so yeah. people have more room. We, we did we did request a, quick a quick larger room, room yeah. but uh, yeah, I guess they gave us a small room. And as you can see, even those yeah, panelists are kind of crammed in the small area. Room. We're just good friends. That's all. <laughs> All right. I got a quick question for you. Sure. Guys. We'll take the process right now. Uh, what did you guys think of the original concepts with the shock collars? Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, actually, I, I think I mentioned this at the one of our previous panels, by that it's still a it's still a great, interesting concept, yeah. but it does not work in the context of this Zootopia universe. But the idea I had for future Zootopia movies would be kind of in the style of the uh, Tezuka films. If you've seen Tezuka's uh, anime and uh, animated films, he would reuse the exact same characters as actors, but in completely different roles. So I'd love to see like an anthology of Zootopia films, but they all take place in different universes and worlds, but have the exact same characters just portraying different roles. So we could realistically have that shock collar one or the one where Nick is doing his um, spy work in that other concept. It seems it's, it's the shot collar stuff seems a bit too dark. I think yeah, because uh, yeah, uh, even as an adult, I'm like that's really dark for a Disney film. Yeah, I'm glad they took. Yeah, and, and I think the it. message wouldn't have as quite the impact because yeah. yeah. it would be very one sided. It would correct me if I'm wrong. Nick was the original main yeah. character, and then they switched to Judy, right? Yeah, yeah. it was also very much. black and white. Yeah, yeah, like you know who the bad guys were, and you know who the good guys yeah. were with the shot collars. You didn't. There wasn't yeah. a lot of thought that would go into like watching a movie like that because, like you guys said, it's it's very uh, it's blunt as far as. Bad, <laughs> good, <laughs> and which is very much so a western. I, I think, yeah, and I think they said the creators were like the the biggest issue that they had with that original concept was that nobody was able to relate to any of the characters, mm. yeah. which is surprising how like how this movie became a success because you hear horror stories of films and scripts being rewritten over and over again, oh, yeah. and Zootopia that that wasn't even one of the concepts like like the spy film idea was Jackson. also another concept and then there's a uh, one where nick was doing his amusement parks for predators mm -hmm. uh, there's like so they had at least like 10 different ideas that they went yeah. through and reinvented until they finally realized hey judy's our main character mm -hmm. not nick and judy uh, nick was the main character in all these previous incarnations and it's impressive how they worked on this like patched together through away stuff patched together through away stuff and it still came out a fantastic film mm -hmm. so i guess it's like what Sorry, Orson guys, well said that. we oh, have no worries. It's like what old. Orson Welles said, like, sometimes, like, the best works come out of struggle and yep. adversity. Well, Star Wars, uh, A New Hope, was a disaster, an oh, yeah. absolute disaster of a film that, like, they were like, this is, this is we're dead. We're dead. And uh, that's, but it was saved on the editing room floor, as they say. Yeah, like, you know, George Lucas was, like, editing it, like, re-editing it. No, it was some other editors yeah. who had saved it. Oh, really? George yeah. Lucas's cut sucked. And all his friends, they, they, I'm serious, they, they, sh they showed it. Mr. Blake everybody. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, when you think of Star Wars, it's like, you have to keep in mind that Lucas only directed the first film. Uh, and the prequels, who? Yeah. But uh, he did A New Hope, Irvin Kishner did the second one, yeah. and then, I, I forget the third guy. Uh, uh, he did as well, I think. Irvin Kishner did the third one? Well, I, no, 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 Lawrence Kazan. Lawrence Kazan. Uh, yeah, he, he so did the third one. So basically, George did the first one, it was a disaster, he showed it, you die, Nick. He showed it to some, uh, some colleagues, there. and his colleagues were like, George sucks. And uh, and he's like, oh, this, this sucks, man. And then the editors took oh, what, care of it, and they fixed it. And the only thing, I, and a little fun fact, the only good part about the film, outside of them fixing it with the editing, was, of course, the music John Williams provided. Yeah. That was the only category. They're like, wow, 
this excels. When, when he when the first cut was shown, mm-hmm. there was like you said, there was a big like group of guys that were making movies back in the day. I wouldn't be surprised if Spielberg was in there. And everybody everybody was like, dude, you literally should just stop <laughs> what you're doing. This is terrible. There was one person in that room that said, this could be big. Was it Spielberg? It was Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you guys are both right because that, that was consensus um, of the law of film historians mm-hmm. that it was saved on the editing room floor because mm-hmm. he, he, and clips of the original version was on... Uh, are on YouTube. If you see it, Darth Vader was still speaking with like a British accent. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the fun story: the, 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 the guy who actually was in the suit. Yeah, he was like some. I think he was like some Scottish guy. Yeah. and they actually have cuts on YouTube of him talking because he went into the movie thinking, "I'm the voice of Vader." He was like, "I tore this place apart, and we're gonna find the prince alive." And and then they were like, he didn't know until he saw it that he's like. Where's my voice? <laughs> <laughs> he's still he's he. I think if Why I'm correct, Mufasa speaking. Yeah. Uh, he okay. actually won't go to conventions because he's still ticked off to this day. George Lucas. Yeah, thing. Oh <laughs> the, the exact opposite happened to Black Griffin on Finding Dory. He went. That's my voice. <laughs> yeah, our buddy Black Finding Griffin Dory. is the voice what? of the uh, yes. bird Becky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, For no, those no. I don't know, Black Griffin is what? the voice of Becky. Yeah, the <laughs> moon, the moon in Finding Dory. Yeah, he found out when he went to see it in theaters, and he was like. <laughs> I remember doing this. <laughs> he, so that cool. he even like spent an evening talking to Andrew Stanton, the director of the movie. <laughs> so uh, they never told him what it was for, and he was just like, "Okay, have fun with those." Something to do with like, how, if it's like a certain amount of footage, they don't have to credit you. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> what? yeah. All right. Now back to Zootopia. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's good points, bro. But this is a Zootopia panel, and go we to, are at a convention that's only two miles away from Disneyland yeah. and California Adventure. Yeah. So I'm guessing you. You three went to uh, California Adventure. And- yeah, Nick and Judy. I'm jealous. Did you guys see Nick and Judy? Not not last Thursday. Um, not. We, we actually, Judy wasn't around That's that day. It. She was working with ZDP work. They were yep, yep, she was out. So um, we were all over the place. And unfortunately, didn't get a chance to see Nick. But, you know. I saw uh, Judy at Disney World. Yes, you dance with Judy. At this I, I want, you want to hear the story, guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I uh, went to Disney with my girlfriend, and uh, we found out that there was only one Zootopia, like, I guess, attraction there. And that was during a parade where Judy and Nick were on this float. And I was like, okay, where does the float stop? Where can, like, where can, can I say hi to her? And they're like, okay, yeah, the float stops over here. She gets off the float, and she might, you know, wave at you. So I was ready. And uh, she <laughs> hopped off the float, and I was waving at her. And then, the, like, I guess the Disney guards were like, no, 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 do not cross the line. Stay here, stay here. <laughs> and Judy was like walking up to me, doing like this hand motion, like, give me a hug. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it's on, it's on film. So I gave, I gave Judy a big hug. I, uh, I was surprised because, like, I'm just uh, from a statistics po- statistical point of view. There were a lot of Japanese people who were like, Judy! Like, they're like <laughs> swarming around here. Because my girlfriend told me that Japanese love, like, Stitch from Little and Stitch. Yeah. And I guess they also love uh, Judy as well. Hey. From, like, from that pool sample of people. Yeah. All Japanese people love Judy. I think, yeah. like, uh, AC Race Fest pointed out in his uh, uh, How Z- uh, Zootopia Broke a Billion video, he said uh, the big market that they needed to crack was uh, Japan. It was. Yeah. I guess mission accomplished. It went, it went well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. No, no, I actually love that story because I think uh, I, I told, I guess if you guys were here for the BronyCon panel, I talked about my first time visiting California Adventure, and um, I was not allowed to get next to uh, the characters as well. Um, Nick actually was done with his uh, autograph signings, and they're trying to, like, push him out. And they're saying, yeah, you can't see him. He's going to the break room. And, like, on his way to the break room, he saw me, and he's like, hey, come, come. And, there, and uh, I guess the security was like, I guess you could go to him. And Nick just went up to me and, like, gave me a great big hug and was, like, look at my outfit. And he was like, hey, I love your outfit and stuff. And... It's funny because that Nick, I think, kind of became. It was the opposite. I thought I would be the Nick stalker. Yeah. He kind of became my stalker. Really? Oh, yeah. You're like in the bathroom and he's just like, "Nick, no, <laughs> yeah. no, because, see you, Nick." <laughs> no, because I passed by that. I had to. He, they were doing the signings at the uh, at the Little Mermaid area, and I had to pass by that place uh, like three other times. And each time I passed by, he was like, he might have been in the middle of taking pictures, but he would stop completely and just wave at me and try and kick him. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. Right now. Can I share a quick story quickly? Sure. Okay, so uh, my girlfriend and I went to Disney World earlier uh, this year in March. We were at the Animal Kingdom, 
And this was one of the funniest interactions I've ever seen uh, between a cast member in a suit and a, uh, I guess, an attendee at the park. Mm-hmm. I say interaction, but it was more like the lack of interaction. So it was Baloo the bear was in a suit, and he's, like, walking down to, I guess, the restroom. He's, like, waving at people. And you know, <laughs> yeah. he's in the suit, so, like, your eyes are kind of blocked out. Well, this little kid was, like, was running up, and he, like, went like this, like, to give a hug to Baloo. <laughs> but Baloo was looking the other way, so he was, like, waving and walked right past the kid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a camera. That I seems like wish a camera I had a movie. movie. It does. It, it's, yeah, it really does. <laughs> Actually, someone uh, candidly caught that um, moment of Nick like calling me up because like and. I, they didn't even know it would happen. Someone caught it. I think uh, someone from uh, Zootopia News Network recorded as well. My yeah. friends recorded it as well. But, okay, so the end of the story is, like, the, the fourth time I passed by Nick, he, like, wanted me to come up again. I was like, okay. So I went up to Nick, and he kind of hugged me, and he started, like, pressing his face against Ugh. me, like, Aww. kissing, and I heard kissing noises from inside the mask. <laughs> I want to brag, but I've gotten those from Judy. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually, um, on Thursday, I actually did go to um, uh, California Adventure again, and I got to see Nick again. So let's see if I have some pictures of Nick. You too, huh? So this one was a different Nick, and I see I was dressed like Nick, and he was like, he thought he was looking in a mirror. That's yeah, he was. was he was actually very, very. This one was very, very. Like he was. I think he was. This was a different. Um, I like how you member. guys are doing the same pose. What do you mean? Yeah, but he was. He was really trying to be playful with me, and he won. He was like, he loved my outfit. He wanted us to compare ties. That's great. Which was so funny. Um, oh my god. And he wanted this picture. I didn't. I didn't post this picture. But, uh, <laughs> But no, he, uh, neck, guys. But I felt bad because I think I, I was holding up the line and I, want, I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. But he's like, no, 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 you're taking more pictures. And he was like, <laughs> and he took like two minutes to pose the scene with, but it's like, you have to stand here. It's like motioning with, you know, his hands. It's like, yes, hey, hold your popsicle and do this. So that was pretty See, fun. he gets it. He understands. And then uh, uh, there, I was with uh, All Levels and his girlfriend as well. And uh, he, he was the one who made the song at the beginning. But yeah, they also was playing around with Nick. Nick was very playful. In fact, this was supposed to be their picture. He called me back to take a picture with him. So, I don't know. I guess... He's actually trying to get you to stay there so you can go home early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But I guess the Nicks really, really liked us. So. And then um, when I was in uh, Disney World, um, I actually I went there for their um, Halloween um, event, uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. And Nick and Judy were apparently the police patrol that cleared off the streets for the parade. <laughs> so I waited for two for both parades, and they didn't, didn't see Nick and Judy. Apparently, they were only at the end of Main Street, which was a little bit upsetting because I wanted Aww. to see them. But they have this Shake It Move It parade. Mm. Where they the floats come in and they're all dancing That's on the, the floats. That's the ones I saw. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nick was on the float and he actually and then they were saying no, you can't get by the floats. But Nick came down. He saw me. But this Nick was very different. He was more aggressive. He saw me in the <laughs> outfit and he was like, come here. He was like, he was like, I think he was up, he was like, why are you copying my style, bro? Because he was like pointing at me, like pressing my chest very hard and just looking at my outfit, and just like filming me up. But yeah, he just steal like, my job. Yeah. Um, and then he, he like did a random dance with me. But he was like really more aggressive than the previous Nick, which was kind of interesting. But yeah, if you guys, since you guys are here in town for the event, uh, make sure to stop by um, California Adventure if you want to see uh, Nick and Judy. Judy is the one that she doesn't appear often, but I'm thinking it's because she's a small cast member, and small cast members who could be in suits are kind of in demand. There, there, there's also days where it's only Judy and yeah. not Nick. Um, but yeah, like you said, if you guys, they're fun to interact with, especially when they're there together because they play off of each other very well. Um, like actually, uh, oh, I just realized she's handling right now, but, um, my fiance now, I, I just recently got engaged at Disneyland and, yeah. and, uh, we went over to where Judy and Nick were. And I walked up to them, like, guys, look what I did, look what I did. And they're looking at the ring, and of course, Nick's like looking at it, like, oh, right. <laughs> and Miley's looking at him, like, all right, Nick, now it's your turn. And you just see Judy slowly, like, look over, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen. Tell oh, it is. Yeah. Disney is officially mum on Wild Hops, but the people in the Nick and Judy outfits at the parks, 
They're all over each other. I don't know how <laughs> mom like <laughs> Rich Moore is about it. He's like <laughs> hearts, 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 hearts. Oh no. It, no, it depends because like what uh, when I went to a park the first time. Um, Judy was flirting, uh, Chip and Dale passed by, and she grabbed <laughs> and she was flirting yeah. with Chip. And then, uh, Nick was so, so bad, I think there are there's actually a video on YouTube about it, but, <laughs> and there's pictures, but Nick was so sad, he just walked away to oh. a corner and put his hands in his palms, <laughs> right? Well, Nick was, well, Judy was just flirting with Chip the entire time, and Dale was kind of just in the corner, oh like, okay, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it was funny that... They were doing these weird interactions. Uh, did you guys see that picture where they were on the parade and they actually kissed? Yes, that's the one I was talking about. <laughs> Good. Did you Good. guys see that picture? I, I, I don't know if I have. I, I want to. I want to give a shout out real quick for those that don't know. Obviously, if you guys are here, you're probably at least a mild fan of Zootopia. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, the Zootopia News Network. It's yep. basically like Equestria yeah. Daily but that we know Zootopia. for ponies, but for Zootopia. And there's a lot, that's where I keep up with like all the news and, in, in regards to Zootopia. I'm actually with a few of the staff there. There you go. So, uh, yeah, uh, check it out, Zootopia News Network. It's a, it's a cool site. And like I said, it's actually structured <laughs> off of like with Equestria Daily's format. So yeah. you'll recognize it. All right, cool. Um, how was your day at the park? You didn't talk too much about it. Did you get to see Nick and Judy? Or? Oh no, I, I didn't see uh, any mascots really. Um, but uh, oh yeah, and you said you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we went on uh, a lot of the rides, and uh, because I, I was very tired uh, on Thursday because I didn't sleep like any on the plane here, so I was around. I was walking around Disneyland like on no sleep. <laughs> so, what rides did yeah. you guys enjoy the most? Um, Space, Space Mountain, Space Mountain yeah. is always great. Indiana uh, Jones. Yeah, Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, because they don't have it on the what? Uh, they still on Thunder Mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah safe, I was actually able point. to go on uh, uh, Thunder Mountain this time because the first time I went, because uh, the last time I, I was here, I had, the Thunder Mountain was closed, so I wasn't able to go on it. So I went on this time. It was very fun. Awesome. Okay. Well, I guess we still have about. Uh, 15 minutes left, so I guess we're open for questions. If you want to take questions, raise your hand, and I'll try to call you in order of being raised. All right. I think you were waiting first, so what question do you um, have? So, uh, have you guys read the comic by Mr. Means called Judy is Dead? What? Uh, what? That doesn't sound like a no. comic I would seek out. Yeah, so. but, uh, <laughs> let's read it in front of him. No. It's actually a very, very, very sad comic. Yeah, it doesn't you sound like something I'm going to be reading. Or <laughs> Nick is the chief of police. Well, now the spoilers are coming out. <laughs> now I know about That's Nick. That's all I'm going to say. No. But I highly recommend it because it's a very, very good comic and it's a really good story. All right. And they actually, they actually interviewed uh, CNN. Actually interviewed the uh, artist of that. Sweet. Right. And your question? Uh, What's the next question? Is your question? Uh, so, do you guys think there's any aspects of the movie that uh, weren't added in from the original script that might have been able to? Put it past uh, Frozen in the box office. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Frozen's an anomaly. It, it uh, Frozen comes across. It's a movie that that hit on all cylinders in a big way because it its song went viral, mm -hmm. and yeah. and that's something that in a like in Zootopia's case, I guess the only argument is it needed a song to go viral. I, it it resonated really well with a lot. Like talking about Japan and how well Zootopia did there. In Japan, Frozen did like five times what Zootopia did. It was people, people insane. People just loved Frozen. Yeah, it was weird because Frozen when it came out wasn't initially like an explosion. It was like over time it got like yeah. yeah. It, it was one of the, I think it's like the leggiest movie that yeah. ever existed. Is it bad that Maybe. I didn't see Frozen till this year? <laughs> no, no, but um, yeah, like like where Zootopia did really well was China actually. <laughs> That's where it was like. Yeah, yeah that's what the, the market yeah. people are always trying to untap nowadays. Yeah, yeah. it's weird yeah. because they don't like ghosts, so like, like Ghostbusters couldn't be filmed, uh, shown there because of and ghosts. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. What? what? So the, the they don't, they don't come come like, <laughs> like paranormal stuff. The, 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 are you serious? Uh, yeah, that's why um, I think the mummy they had to redub it so that she was some mystic. Ancient god or something like and that. And the mummy was going to do so well. Fun so fact, uh, Disney related, is that. Everyone was so surprised when China allowed Coco to be shown. Really? really? They're letting Coco be shown because it, it involves like afterlife stuff, and everyone's like, well, we know what country isn't going to let it in. And they were like, 
No, that's okay. <laughs> so, I, 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 I tell you right now, the reason why Pacific Two, Pacific Rim Two, is being made is because of China. I guarantee it. Yeah, really. Guarantee and it. why they, they might be doing a Warcraft sequel? Yeah, yeah. China surprising the Warcraft movie in China. I'm not yeah. too surprised because China loves big like action and fantasy and sci-fi. And it's also easily dubbed as well because oh, it doesn't, God, doesn't take place in the real world. How well the Actually, one thing really the Chinese is. specifically do like, um, because I guess they're kind of anti-American. They do like movies where the American government is kind of a bad guy, or the government <laughs> in general is a bad guy. <laughs> well, that's not true. Which is probably Boston, why they. With that behind it. That's why the uh, like the Transformer movies they like they were saying they liked it because the American military were kind of seen as the aggressors <laughs> and likewise if you think about Zootopia um, oh, yeah it's shit. kind of the uh, bureaucracy that's kind of the bad individuals. Well, so. Pacific Rim Two is kind of I think going to be hitting on that where it's like the monsters are dead but the government is still alive for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest monster of all is still there. Yeah, and you had a question. Well, I wanted to make a. Point out something about the minute that we've been talking yeah, okay. about. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> the whole scene. There's what? Um, <laughs> I saw that back at D23. That was nice. And I thought, I, I, the thing that bugged me about the advertising about it was I thought they kind of blew their, their chance with that one because everybody had already seen it by the time the movie came around. But one thing that bugs me about that scene is that it has become so ubiquitous. Um, I remember when AFI actually awarded. Uh, you know, one of their top 100 films to be Zootopia. Wow! So they did this compilation on YouTube, and what do they show from Zootopia? That scene. Yeah, well, and I'm like, there's so many iconic, important, and serious things in that film, and that's what you show? So what's always bugged me about that scene, I mean, it's wonderful and it's funny, but I think it kind of sells the movie. If that's all you know about Zootopia, I think it sells the movie short because I don't think you're going to realize what I loved about Zootopia wasn't how funny it was; it was how serious it was. Yep. I get, I get your point, but at the same time, I think that that scene got a lot more people to see the movie in the first place, and then people yeah. it's probably agreed with you with. Like, it wasn't the humor, it was how deep the movie was. Well, look, look at, like, Frozen, like, like they, they hit it with the magic of, like, you know, it's a fantasy snow land with princesses, and then you've got, like, you know, Elsa crying over her dead icicle sister, you know? It's actually so, based spoilers. on Snow Queen. No, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, you, know, like you, gotta, you gotta net the majority of your audience in with something that's, that's a bit sweeter if you're, I think, doing like a Disney animated film. I get you, though. I get what you're saying. As, as a longtime furry fan, what I got, what I loved, I got to go to the Annie Awards and I got to meet the directors and tell them. Nice. What nice. I loved about <clears throat> Utopia was that it explained something that a lot of furry fans have been trying to tell people for a long time. And frankly, so does Ponies. <laughs> that... <laughs> Talking animal stuff can be used to tell serious yeah. stories yeah. for yeah. grown-ups. Yeah. That yeah. makes yeah. sense. I mean, look at look at the government. The Democrats have donkeys and Republicans have elephants. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, so <laughs> your friends from there. Yeah. All right. Um, who else has a question? All right, you right yeah. there. Um, so, hypothetical here. Let's say that Disney XD greenlights. A Zootopia animated Ooh, series. Yes! Yeah. You all get to pitch an episode. Oh, yeah. What do you pitch? What? Oh, the homicide oh. case. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the birds finally came back to Zootopia and they want it. For back. <laughs> um, What's a human? <laughs> well, uh, what happened to the, all, all the primates? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't need anything War but the just slice of life episodes of, of Judy and Nick going on dates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually would be curious of uh, like kind of like a prison movie where maybe they're accidentally drawn in prison because uh, <laughs> accidentally <laughs> the longest yet mile or yard. they were mistaken for someone else or they were <laughs> framed <laughs> and it's just them in prison trying to deal with it. Like that could be That'd probably be fun. Uh, I never expected a Mayor Bellwether spinoff show. <laughs> it's been seven years. I'm, cu I'm curious. <laughs> just. Just by a raise of hands, um, I'm gonna have an either or. So it's it's either show or movie Wait, or, sequel. or a sequel. What would you guys rather? A show? Raise of hands. Sequel. Is the show gonna be? Can I raise both hands? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Jack. Is the show going to be in 2D or CGI? It needs to be 2D. <laughs> it would probably have to be 2D. I don't. I would think. love it to be. My, my concern with the show is just they. I I feel like. I'd, I'd be worried if they didn't get all like the VAs back. True. 
Uh, that's yeah. 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 Probably yeah. Just watch the Ozarks if you let him out of the Jason Bateman be a con artist again. You know what I want is GTA Zootopia. Yeah, a video game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I would play the hell out of that. Yeah, we have a question back there. Okay. You're a more lighthearted question. Regards sure. to your, your comments about Alan Tudyk. And Tudyk, yeah. The one. So you know he was in Moana too, right? Yes, and he uh, was the... Hey, so you're saying yeah. that, that you found that... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay that, that one was a uh, special exception because... Um, because of the significance of Moana being a film about a Polynesian princess, they wanted every single um, uh, voice actor and everyone working on the project to be um, uh, of Polynesian descent. And now it's like his uh, European descent, so he couldn't be there. But he has also been in every single Disney movie since Bolt. So they couldn't really ruin that chain of not having him in there. So they had to give him some role, so they just gave him the... Uh, yeah, the what role did he play in Bolt? I forgot, but I know that was like one of his first ones he was in. Let's go. Cool. All right, uh, another question. Uh, you right there. So, with going back to the one minute um, with the DMV scene, so we have the slots, and they're slow. They're you know they take the time with everything and all that. Uh, for a movie that goes about trying to uh, create a situation where everything goes against the stereotype, trying to you know break down the movie's core concept into don't judge a book by its cover. Don't you think that scene, which doesn't kind of embody that principle because it seems to focus purely on the stereotypes. I think that's antithetical to the messages of the movie. No. Because I, I think the movie is not so much saying um, that everybody's equal or that you know you don't live by the stereotypes. I think it's more about living like up to your uh, I, I guess full expectation as in regards to with the sloth you know, his limitation is he's naturally slow. You know, this is this is how they're able to move. With Judy, she's short. With, you know, I, I feel like I feel like the message wasn't so much about, like, saying, no, you know, we're all on, on level ground. But it's more about, like, not letting that dictate how, how you treat people. Like, yeah, someone's slower, like, physically slower. It doesn't mean you have to be, like, you know. I guess, like, assume, like, other things about their life and, and just, like, come to conclusions. Like, for Nick, everyone's like, well, you're a fox, so we're going to assume that you're a jerk or you're, you know, you're probably trying to pull something, you know. So so to me, like, for me, I don't I don't think it was. I think it, it obviously hit on, like, a stereotype of sloth, so to speak, but at the same time, it's like, it's just the physicality of a sloth. You can still drive a car pass. Right. Um, <laughs> the other one back there? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a scene in the movie where I believe the weasel is like selling like boot like DVDs. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and it's basically like parodies of like Tangled and Wreck and Ralph. And it's uh, like they're animals, right? Yeah. So one thing that came to my mind is like, what are movies like Jungle Book and Lion King are? <laughs> <laughs> Documentaries. <laughs> 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 Alright. Um, you. <laughs> yeah, when I was watching Zootopia, one of the parts that. Uh, really made an impression was Judy's parents, how later in the movie, even though they had had prejudices about you know, the predators, they began to interact with Gideon Gray, you know, with his old paper thing. Mm -hmm. We talked about it earlier, oh, yeah. briefly, I'm not sure if we arrived uh, later in the panel, but we're, just, we're saying that it's, it's cool to see how Gideon... Uh, came around on his own and it wasn't your typical like villain or bully where he's like you know, ah, I hate you and that's it I'm still a bad guy yeah he's like he because I've seen people like that you know I think a lot of us who grow up after a while from like you know middle school or high school look back and go wow uh, I was you know either a jerk or weird or I you know I, I've grown up now and I'm in a better place and forgetting like you can tell he had a lot of guilt he was sorry he got his chance to apologize you'd accepted it and I think it was uh, very therapeutic for both of them. Yeah, I think it, it, it opens up. We don't see it a lot in movies where you are shown that even, like, characters that were jerks <laughs> as kids grow up. And, and a lot of times, you know, people that were jerks as kids start to realize, or like you said, there's evidence that he may have gone to therapy, you know, the way he was talking about, like... Could you imagine, like, Scar... Like, <laughs> like the scene Mufasa is like Scar brother help me and he's like I'm sorry Mufasa that's been a real big jerk <laughs> like, that's okay but pull me up <laughs> hey if there was ever good timing for it that was the time <laughs> you know what you're right what am I doing well I was referring more to Judy's 
parents. How, how they change. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, it's like, like, it, it's, it's, it's two-sided almost. Yeah. Like, we see how Gideon changed, but also their parents were starting to open up to, okay, there's an outside world out there that, you know, it seemed like they were so stuck in their bunny burrow way. Yeah, yeah. And then once Junie... Junie. Junie. Oh, Junie. Junie. deserve this hat. Junie. <laughs> no, uh, the, 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 one of the, I think the greatest changes for a person is <laughs> if you have a prejudice, like, to get out there and hang out with that, that person, you know, whether it's you know, a different sexual orientation or whatever. Like you learn that they're just people like you, and that the the stereotypes that you believe in aren't real. And it sounds like Jewish parents, you know, they're like, okay, we'll hang out with Gideon and his family. Oh, they're just like us. They're just average people, <laughs> animals, and uh, and that that's kind of what killed off their prejudice. And they're like, okay, maybe we were wrong. The movie has so many things that it hits upon with so many different characters, and that's one of the things I love about it, is stuff like that. Like, it's a little scene in the movie, but it tells so much about character development for a lot of characters. Well, in the future, if there's specific moments uh, any of you three I'd like to talk about, I'd like to invite you guys back on the podcast just for those specific moments. Yes. Yeah, yeah we yeah. Look, this is all fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Well, uh, I guess before we go, oh, we have some more questions. Okay. I'll, we, I think we have time for two more questions, so uh, we'll take people who haven't asked yet. So, yes. Ace Risk Us, was it necessary to buy everything? Yes. <laughs> I, I am still working on buying everything. In fact. I'm sorry to I, buy for those that, everything. For those that don't know, I made a, a song parody of Try Everything to Buy Everything, where I'm dancing around with all the stuff. And I didn't realize while I was making it, I didn't, I hadn't bought like any of that stuff yet. And it wasn't until about two weeks after I released the video where I'm like, wait. I do want that thing. I do want this plush. I do want this shirt. And I, so I actually pre-told the story of myself without knowing it. <laughs> and last question to you. Okay, so if they make a sequel for Utopia, I feel like what has been missing that I know is the first film, but what I've missed are the of sea creatures and birds and Lizards. Like, where exactly are they? Because Zootopia is like, it's all wild animals. They're all mammals. But They're eating them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but, even, but even dogs and <laughs> dogs and cats. Like, so, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of question in that question. There's um, question. They're, they're, <laughs> the, the swimming <laughs> creatures, unfortunately, do show up in the film. Um, we don't see them, but there is a fish market. They're, they are actually... Uh, I think that's the main food They source. never evolved. They never, they okay. never made it, guys. Yeah, it's, it's like fish and insects are the things yeah. that yeah. the carnivores So that's like the main food. protein. Birds are referenced in uh, the song, uh, the Try Everything song, so mm -hmm. they must exist somewhere, some, yeah. somehow. Yeah. Lizards, uh, they live in Australia. And, <laughs> uh, and then you talked about dogs and cats, and yeah. the, the creators <laughs> of the movie actually specifically left out dogs and cats because those are actually domesticated animals. Yeah, they're domesticated. Yeah. So, like, so we, oh, we oh, see, like, different, like, like when you think about the, what was it, 1960, the, the Robin, Disney's Robin Hood and everything, a lot of the characters were kind of a mix of both wolves, dogs, foxes, and lions and everything. But they were, but there were dogs in there. So that, that's true. In this yes. movie, they're assuming that animals evolved in a specific path. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, without, without humans. Humans, 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 humans crafted yeah. dogs and cats yeah. to fit our it's needs. Something so humans created. don't live in stupid, yeah. so dogs are... Wolves, they never became dogs. Dogs are basically our wolf sonas that we just wanted. To <laughs> <laughs> That's why my, my poodle's trying so hard. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, I guess before we go, I would like to have our guests, uh, I guess, plug themselves oh. one last time. Uh, <laughs> my name is Saber Spark. You can find me on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, I'm AC Race Best. You can find me on YouTube, YouTube and Twitter. <laughs> yeah, and I'm Paleo Stetto, and you can also find me on YouTube, YouTube and Twitter. And Twitter right? <laughs> and if you guys guys enjoyed this, uh, be sure to check us out at Zootopia Minute. We are on ZootopiaMinute.tumblr.com. You can follow us also on Twitter at Zootopia Minute. And we are on YouTube at Zootopia Minute. And we'd like to thank you for joining thank our you. panel at Ever Free. Thank you. Hey, thank you. And we will send you out with a, with a song by all of us at once who's right behind you. Yeah.